Hi, Amy of Fashion Tappings here, and finally with the sewing video. Uh, like I promised, I promised I would get a video in today, but I'm working on my curtains, and they are very time consuming. I have to cut every little tulip, little uh, petal as I go and pin them back and keep them out of the way. I'm gonna try to do a video on that, but I gotta figure out how I'm gonna edit it because it's hard to see the stitching on the white for one, and I'm using white thread. And also, so what I'm gonna think I'm gonna do is make the curtains, and then I'm gonna take some scrap smaller, like black material, and show you how I put it together and do it in a scaled down version so you can see how I did the seams, how I put everything together, but that's another project. Today we're gonna tackle this ugly thing. <laughs> I actually like the form of this dress, and I'm going to insert a picture here, or here. I'm not sure where it's going to show up. Um, I got this at the thrift store for, I'm thinking, and this is one of my first thrift hauls. This has been in my closet for a long time, just waiting to be transformed. Wasn't sure what I was going to do with it, um, but I think I paid 99 cents for this one. But um, it's just, it's a very school teacher I used to be a school teacher, so I'm not knocking the way school teachers dress. I'm just knocking. This is usually, it would have been one of my go-tos, something very comfortable, very flowing, um, something that I can sit with, I can get down on the ground with kids with, it's long. So that's why I refer to it as being a school teacher dress. It's because when I was a school teacher with the elementary kids, um, I actually tried to wear very loose, comfortable clothes that were long and... Um, that I could really move around in, but still feel like I'm dressed up. This is just way too conservative, but the material is nice and summery. It's very thin. Like I said, I'm gonna insert a picture, but I'll try to stand up in it. Okay. As you can see, what I liked about it, I mean, this thing goes, I got my leggings on underneath it, but I mean, it goes almost to the floor and it's got pleats everywhere, as you can see in the pictures. It's a very high neckline with this very, that's kind of neat. That's an idea for a new neckline. Make it higher like that. I don't know. We're going to play with it on the dress form, but I wanted to show you it on. What I liked about this, the reason I got it was it has this center. Okay. There's a pleats right here. You can see all the pleats at the bottom of the skirt. There's this wide band right here. And granted, I have a shirt and leggings underneath this, so I might see some bunching. But um, it has this wide band right here. And I just think sometimes... You know, it makes for a nicer silhouette. It kind of breaks up, you know, too much material on a dress. So this is why I got it. It's because of this little panel here. So we're going to be putting this on the dress form. My trusty little dress form couldn't live without it. So I'm going to put this on the dress form, and we're going to manipulate it and decide what we want to do with updating this look so that I can wear it this spring. I already know long sleeves got to go because um, I won't wear long sleeves in the spring. And since I have put on some weight during this whole renovation and I have not worked out at all, um, right there, I will not be wearing any sleeveless shirts for a little while until I can get downstairs to our basement and start working out again. So um, I definitely will not be doing the, str the strapless thing. I'm going to make uh, short sleeves to probably about here just so I can be nice and cool, you know, for the summer, but I can hide my arms you know right now so many dresses when you go to the stores they're all sleeveless or they're all spaghetti straps and um, you know I'm not feeling too good about my my upper half right here right now so I want to make this dress so that I'll be comfortable so I am going to leave short sleeves on it for sure I know that so let's go ahead I'm gonna take this off I'm gonna put it on the dress form let's start manipulating let's start manipulating the neckline and decide what we want to do with the neckline we can either you don't have a dress form, just do it on yourself. We can either take the collar off and just make it a simple V. Now we're imagining short sleeves. We can just make it a simple V by taking the neckline off or the collar off. That makes a huge difference. And to be honest with you, that is one of the easiest things you can do to a neckline to update it. Because all you do is fold the collar under, make sure your seam is right here. And then take it to your sewing machine and do a top stitch all along your seam and it holds that collar under and then you also have a finished finished inside edge that's the easiest thing you can do and that's usually what i end up doing because it always looks nice and there's less chance for error so i can take that off if you i do have a shirt underneath so but if you want to make it a plunging neckline 
then that's all you do is just keep folding it down. Now, I'm not much for a plunging neckline. Well, I could if I was wearing a cami underneath it, so I could do a plunging neckline. But that right there makes a huge difference. So if you want to wear a cami, you just fold down even farther and top stitch. But here you'd have to take the buttons off. That's easy. Or another option is what I just did just a second ago. Take the collar, fold it up, fold it over. So you have like a crisscross collar. It's kind of neat. I kind of like that. Maybe for the fall, I'd do something like that. Make sure it's nice and flat here, right here. Make sure it lays nice and flat and just put a, an eye hook. Just put a little eye hook right there, hook, and it'll stay. And look at, oh, you can wear a nice like scarf around this. That'd be really classy. I don't know which way I'm gonna go. This is really cute up. Might be too conservative, but I like the idea of just that, I don't know if you call it asymmetrical or whatever, but having that line right here and then having my collar go up this way and then wearing a scarf around it. That would've been really cute for this fall. So try your clothes on, manipulate them, move them around, decide what looks best. Because originally I decided that was it, I'm just folding the collar under, but I kind of like the collar up. So we'll see, we're gonna try it on the dress form. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is cut off the arms for sure. And then um, this length has got to go. I'm gonna make it knee length and um, possibly put a hem on it, possibly not. Because it is pleated, I have to see if this material will fray. Because I have done that before where I just you know, cut it off and left it and it didn't fray. It just depends on the material. But we'll see as we go. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing I'm gonna do, like I said, Put it on the dress form. I went ahead and cut the sleeves off to be short and it's so easy. Basically I just made sure it was laying flat, it's made sure my side seams were connected, my, my sleeve was laying flat on the ground, just chopped it off at the length I want, always making extra length because you know you have to turn it under and hem it. So I always at least give myself an inch just in case I make a mistake. So I cut the sleeve off. Then what you do you should take what you cut off and you lay it on the other sleeve so you know how much to cut off. You just line up the two sleeves together and so I cut that off and then I moved my cutoff piece. I moved it over there to, to the other arm so I knew how much to cut off so both my arms are actually the same length. Hopefully that makes sense. So next, we're not going to be doing a lot to this dress but I am going to make it so I can wear it. But since I'm going to be wearing it this, this summer for church, I am going to do the easiest and the most versatile neckline. And all you have to do is tuck it under. So you're going to do that and you're going to pin. Okay, you're going to pin that collar down, making sure the current stitch side seam, the seam that your collar and your dress connect to that seam, uh, make sure that is right on the edge right here. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this all the way around. Okay, as I was pinning around my dress, you know, and I forgot these ugly shoulder pads. So, this shoulder pads are easier to move. See, you can see the red through it. There's just, it's just a couple of strings that hold it together. So snip, snip, snip. Got rid of those. So. I had to make sure I got rid of the shoulder pads. I completely forgot to look for those or forgot to remove them before I started pinning. So, so I have my neckline pinned now. So the next step is to take it to the sewing machine. I'm gonna do what's called a top stitch. A top stitch, that means I'm, you notice, I just grabbed the button on there for some reason. Um, the, uh, the, you notice the dress is inside right. Usually I'm working on dresses, I'm working inside out. Um, but I'm doing a top stitch. So I'm actually gonna be stitching on the right side of the fabric and I'm gonna get cord, uh, matching thread, and I'm just gonna st stitch very close to the edge, as, edge, as close as I can get with a straight stitch, so it's not that noticeable. I'll show you, I'll, take, I'll try to take some video of that as well, um, but that's easy. So all we did is fold the collar under, and now we're gonna top stitch to, to make sure it stays under. Then the next step, I'll be ironing this first, but I, I, I'm gonna, I'm going to do a double rolled hem on the right side of the fabric. 
because I liked I like the cuff look. Now this fabric is the same on the inside as it is on the outside. See, inside, outside is the same. So I'm just going to roll once, roll twice. So I have a cuff. I'll iron it so that it's nice and crisp. Iron it, and I'm going to pin it in place, and I'm going to sew this cuff in just like I would a hem. So I'm going to put that in, and I'll show you that. Then when the dress is off as well, I need to decide how short I want it. So I'm going to me uh, measure from my waist down to my knees, add an inch uh, for a hem allowance in case I want to put a hem on it, and I'm just going to chop it off. And that you have to do on the floor. So that won't be on the video because I have to clear space out, and I'll probably take it to the basement on the wood floors so I can put my cutting mat out. But um, uh, just cut straight across. Lay the dress as flat as you can. I recommend using a rotary cutter. <sighs> my rotary cutter is on the floor. Not where you keep a rotary cutter because they're dangerous. But um, I use a rot rotary cutter whenever I'm cutting a hem, uh, whether it be for a shirt or for the bottom of a dress. I always use a rotary cutter because you, you can go straight and you have a nice straight cut. If you use scissors, every time you open and shut, sometimes you, you get a little curve. Use a rotary. Invest in one of these. You can get them 10 bucks. Joanne Fabrics. So make sure you get a rotary cutter. But uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it off. I'm going to top stitch my neckline. I'm going to iron a double rolled hem on each sleeve, pin it into place, and I'll show you how to stitch that. And I'm going to cut the dress off at the desired length. Um, and then I'll be back and show you how we put it all together on the sewing machine. Okay, so I just stitched down, I top stitched my new neckline. See, no more collar. It's all gone. But actually, it's not. It's on the inside. Now, see how that works? So now that's the old collar, and it's on the inside of the dress. It acts as interfacing on the inside of your dress. No seam ripping, no cutting, nothing. And um, on the outside, I, you can see my little stitch right along my borders right there. That is going to keep the collar on the inside, and it won't pop out. So as easy as that. Now let's go ahead and tackle those sleeves and the hem. Okay, next up, the cuffs on the sleeves. All I did, got it pinned and ready. All I did, you can see, I just folded it twice and I ironed it so I had this nice crisp edge. Oops, my two hands. I ironed it so that I have a nice crisp edge on the outside. It'll keep my um, hem nice and straight for when I sew it. But I just did a double roll hem on the outside. I folded towards the right side of the fabric. So this is actually going to be visible from the outside. Now I'm going to take it to my sewing machine. The straight stitch right down this line right here. Right down this line right here. All the way around the sleeve. So I'm going to go do that right now. So as you saw, I just did my sleeves. And here is how they turned out. So here, see, it's a nice little roll, double rolled hem. But on the outside, and I just put a little stitch so that it, see, I have a nice edge there. Then I also have the nice edge here. So just a little cuff to dress up my sleeve. It's not very noticeable. It just gives it a more finished look. So now for that hem. Okay, now it's starting to take shape. My neckline's done. I have to put the button back on yet. Uh, my sleeves with my hems are done. And now I've cut the length off. Of the dress, made it nice, flirty little length, almost right to my knees, so it's not too revealing. So all I have to do next is turn it inside out, and I'm going to do a rub double rolled hem. Now, since this does have pleats in the front here, this those few subtle pleats that are in the front, this is going to require some ironing. So I'm going to. This is the wrong side of my fabric, even though it looks the same. Wrong side of my fabric. I'm actually going to the bottom of my hem. I'm going to roll once, pretty small, and then I'm going to roll again. And then I'm going to iron it. And that's very important, especially with these pleats to be able to keep everything in place. Iron it and then place a pin in it. Um, also, where you have pleats at, once we stitch our hem in, we will re iron those pleats back in so, you know, so the pleats are nice all the way through. We'll iron that back in. But for now, fold it once. A small fold, fold it twice so you have a nice finished edge, and then pin it. But before you pin it, make sure you iron it because that is going to be the key to keeping everything in place 
and having your hem look nice and neat. So make sure you iron it. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and fold my hem. I'm going to iron it, put my pins in, and then take it to my sewing machine and do the exact same stitch as I just did around my sleeves. I'm going to stitch right along the bottom of the fold. The straight stitch, because this is not stretchy fabric at all. So let's go ahead and get started with that, and then we are done. Okay, so the hem is done. This is the right side of the fabric. You can slightly see my little sewing line. That's the right side of the fabric. But the hem is done. And now the only thing that's left is to try this on. Here's the finished dress. What I did is I paired it up with my little jacket that I got from the Goodwill. And I put it with a little pop of blue or turquoise. Just to dress it up a little bit. Here it is with the short sleeves. Remember the sleeves were long and I kind of kind of hide my arms. And um, the only thing I noticed, I need a tan. I don't know if I'll be wearing a dress anytime soon until I get a spray tan done. I almost look blue. Oh, so sad, so sad. It's very white. But here's how it turned out. I think it turned out pretty cute. So here's this dress. And like I said, I paired up with a blazer. It's chilly at night. Um, probably a little bit more jewelry, of course. But and then I'm wearing my these are my Jessica Simpsons, the heels to match. So just a really basic, comfy outfit, dressed down, dressed up. Got the nice blazer. Also, my other Goodwill find. I think you remember this from one of my other th uh, thrift stores. From the thrift store, I got it for eight dollars. I think it was my little leather jacket. I went from a frumpy thrift store fine dress to something much more wearable and something that I look forward to wearing to church on Sunday. So this is Amy of Fashion Toppings. Until next time, you have a great day.